We have to heal this wound or we will never stop bleeding. We have to make good this crime. We have to show Tom Robinson justice in this courtroom. Now we can start gathering the animals two by two because we'll be shown God's justice in a hurry. We can't go on like this. We know that. So let's hasten the change. Let's hasten the end of the beginning. Let's do it right now. In Maycomb. Let's begin by restoring this man to his family. Let's begin with justice. That was Jeff Daniels in his Tony-nominated performance as Atticus Finch in To Kill a Mockingbird. The show is a stunning reminder that our hearts can be moved and our minds opened by a simple story about one man doing the right thing and conducting himself as though all of our children are watching. To Kill a Mockingbird on Broadway now is as relevant today as it was when it was written and as important during this moment of turmoil as ever. To Kill a Mockingbird has been nominated for nine Tonys and just recently broke the record for the highest grossing American play in history. Jeff Daniels, who stars in it, is here with us. Now, you've been warned how <laughs> it was going to be here. Thank you so much for coming anyway. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Very happy to be here. How do you guys know each other? He's a, he's a masochist. Or, or a sadist. Well, speaking of that, you have not missed a single performance. Yeah. No, we're in our. Se I mean, we are uh, are in our seventh month of a year long run, and uh, eight shows a week. And uh, no, not yet. I've been sick twice. And you've done it anyway. Yeah. The line is, what do you do when you get the flu on Broadway? Eight shows a week. You just do it. <laughs> you just do it. Why are you doing this show? It's Atticus Finch. Uh, Aaron Sorkin uh, wrote the play based on the book, and Harper Lee, Pulitzer Prize, beloved book, mm -hmm. revered. He is one of the iconic heroes in America, happens to be fictional, but still you can put, people put him up there with Washington and Lincoln mm -hmm. and all of that. You get to play him. You get to become him. And every night you walk out there and we pin the ears back of basically white America. Talk White liberal that. America comes in and they go, we had no idea it was that tough. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a slap in the face. It's a wake up call. It's also a decision. Atticus has to go through a, a, a change different than the book. Uh, we made him more of the protagonist who has a change. And his change is, it's to David's point earlier, or to Mayor Pete's point earlier. Um, um, the people on the other side, they don't have bad intentions, not all of them. Mm -hmm. Atticus believes that there's goodness in everyone. You just have to care enough to look for it. And that's being challenged now. That's being challenged. And, and, and I got to come back and talk to you after. And, and I confess that it was me sobbing in, in the fourth row. There was some weeping. And, yeah. When Atticus is, is, is at the jail and, and protecting, um, the KKK comes. They come mm -hmm. for him. Mm -hmm. And it's Scout that recognizes one of her hooded neighbors mm -hmm. and says, Mr. Mr. Cunningham. Cunningham. And I started sobbing. I mean, our children are watching this moment. Atticus's children are, are played by, by extraordinary actors in the play. And it is this reminder that in this moment in our politics, our children are watching. Children are watching. And, and I live in Michigan. And um, after the election, I was surprised at some of the people. You know, I said, can you believe this election? And they go, yeah, isn't it great? And you're going, whoa, my wife's on Facebook. And these go, oh, we got another Trumper. You know, and it's just, you didn't see it coming. Atticus goes through this. I know these people. They're, they're good people. There's, 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 and there are reasons why. And he's an apologist. He's an enabler. And I think there are people in the Midwest between the coasts who don't pretend, who don't know anything about, who don't care about this, who don't have time for this, who have to make a decision now. You have to decide whether, like Atticus, you believe that there is still compassion, decency, civility, respect for others. Do unto others. Remember that? Do unto others. All that stuff you guys believe in, and you still voted not for Hillary or for Trump. Where are you now? Because you the, everybody, because your kids are looking up at you going, but he lies. And, and I think there are a lot of people in the Midwest who are going, it might be enough for them. We're going to find out if, it, you know, if the big gamble is to go all the way to November 2020, which I agree, and lose, 
It's the end of democracy. One of the people who came to see uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, I think in January, is former FBI Director Jim Comey, yes. who is sort of the, t the tip of the spear in this fight between the president and his own Justice Department FBI. I texted him today. I didn't know that he came to see the play and, and asked him what it means in this moment, and, and he wrote this. Um, do we have that to put up? I'll read it off my, I'll read it off my phone here. Um, First, he said, he said, the whole family went in early January. We were so excited to see that Patrice, that's his wife, fell on the sidewalk, broke her clavicle, and refused to go to the hospital. She held her arm in place during the show. It's the perfect play for our time. It reminds us that people can be deeply biased and flawed, but the truth is a real thing, and our heroes in the long run are always those who stood up for it. The thousand little cowards melt away. There will be no plays about the virtue of this Republican Party and its passion for truth. I mean, he's seeing the same parallel. I think anyone who's been in the arena, in the political arena at another moment, can't escape the parallels between all the, all the cowardice of the mob, which is very much a theme. Yeah, and, and Sorkin writes to that. I think it's Sorkin who put it in, where Atticus talks about, um, you know, a mob uh, uh, acts on emotion, absent facts, absent uh, 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 respect for, uh, absent contemplation, and mostly absent responsibility. What they get is anonymity. A conscience can be exhausting. It'll keep you up at night. A mob's a place where people go to take a break from their conscience. And you lay that line out every night, and you can hear them go, oh. No, you know what they, they go, ah! Yeah, yeah. And I was sitting there. Yeah. Is that and what's that's happening? What you, that's, what, that's what I see when I look at Trump's rallies. That's when I see the lies spewing at these people and people going, I got to believe in something. And he said he'd bring my manufacturing job back and she didn't and I'm all in. But at the end of the day, aside from, yeah, I don't want to pay taxes, it's race. It's race. This is about, this is about the Republican Party or a wing of it going, this is our last chance to save the party. And if we don't, it's the end of the Republican Party. And the only way they can do that was to tap the race button and say, go ahead, it's okay. And he did. And they did. And that was the only card they had left to play, and they played it. And they aren't going to go quietly. And that's why you look at the cowardice of the 15 or so Republicans in the Senate who are still quiet. And I'm not talking about Bob Corker and Jeff Flake and uh, who's the other one that about went, it, went out the Seth, back door. Yeah. You know, that's not courage. That's not courage. That's making sure you've got a job somewhere after politics. Courage is standing up and being a true patriot like we used to have way back in 1776 and all of that. We need some. Who are the heroes going to be? Is it going to be the Daniel Ellsberg Pentagon Papers guy? Who's that going to? Who's the guy the Justice Department that's going to go here? Washington Post. Here's the unredacted. Go. I'm waiting for that guy. We're all waiting for that guy. We need people like that. And, and to look at Congress with all their politics going, well, if I do this, I, don't, I can't do that. You're all worthless to me right now. You are all worthless. I need people to stand up and be heroic. Who are you? Because democracy is at stake. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. I got it. Can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah. You sure can. Yeah. The answer is so, true. So, it happened. I, I got nothing. I, I <laughs> wow. So first of all, you're, you're right about the mob. I, I attended one Trump rally for professional reasons, and a couple of your points resonate. 10,000 people in the arena, less than five people of color. The amount of anger in that room was palpable even before Trump showed up. And as I said to family members later, these are people you go to church with, that you see in your community that you would never think would go to this forum and express such anger. But here's, here's my question for you. You argue the case in the courtroom eight times a week. Mm -hmm. Does part of you, Jeff, or even Atticus, is there that little glimmer you hope the verdict comes back differently one of these times? You hope to appeal to the better angel in them. The white Christian jur farmer jurors that are sitting there that are faceless, but there they are. You, you hope that there is good. In, and I think that's when Atticus gets the punch in the face that, yeah. you know, Atticus, there may not be goodness in everyone. And hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.